Hi everyone, welcome to our first flipped kind of instructional video. So this one's gonna be pretty straightforward, but I just kind of wanted to give you some background. So we're gonna talk unit conversions, um, and a lot of this you've already talked about in other science classes along the way, so we're just doing this. Um, we're not gonna spend a ton of time on conversions and unit conversions, but we do wanna talk a little bit because when we're doing experiments and we are measuring things in the lab, we need to very quickly be able to switch between are different units so that's kind of what this is going to be focusing on so um what are the different units of measurement that we can use there's really two basic there's what we call the standard or also known as the imperial units um or the metric units so when we talk about the standard units of measurements this is what we use like every day we use miles we use inches we use feet ounces pounds gallons miles per hour um seconds hours minutes stuff like that now those seconds hours minutes also fit into this metric unit um realize that they're kind of interchangeable because that's not that's an international like everyone uses all of those those time factors so but these are the ones that we see and we use and we're fairly comfortable with because we've used them our entire life now the ones that scientists use are the metric systems. So you know, we're talking meters, centimeters, kilometers. These are three units of measurements that we're gonna to use to measure length in um, physics classes. We really emphasize the meters in physics. And then grams and kilograms, uh, our calculations need to be done in kilograms where our scales are measured in balance, or our, our balance is measured in grams. So that's kind of the idea. And then we can measure volume in liters. So those are the main units that we often see. So who uses the st standard or the, what we call the imperial? We do, United States. Um, and if you notice, the list of other countries is really small. There's three countries in the world that use the standard units of measurement. So who <laughs> uses the metric? Everyone else, um, including scientists in the United States. So the scientific community publishes their findings using the metric system because everyone else in the world uses the metric system. So it's that international being able to exchange information um, and not worry about getting lost in kind of translation, essentially. So are we going to switch in the United States to the metric system? Uh, I always kind of giggle at that. My grandpa, who was 92 years, no, 90 years old, um, he always told me the story about back when I was a kid. So we're talking like 1940s, or like mid to late 40s probably. Um, he's like, when I was a kid in school, they said, we're going to be switching to the metric system. We have to learn the metric system because one of these days we're going to switch. Um, my grandpa didn't really sound like that, but that's that's what he always talked about is we're going to switch someday. Well, guess what? It's been 80 years since he was told that, and we still use that system of measurement. So why don't we change? We're resistant to change. We don't like new things, right? But will we? Probably not in our lifetime. Maybe we will. Who knows? It, there's some infrastructure issues with switching rank. All of our cars um, do have the kilometers per hour that we can kind of go through, but all of the road signs, and there's a lot of things that would, it'd be a pretty big conversion. But um, So when we talk about metric to metric conversions, what this activity is going to be talking about today is really just kind of from these prefixes from kilo to um, milli. So when we talk about our base unit this is everything is kind of really based on the base unit we're talking meters which we just simply use the letter m for we talk grams which we just use the letter g for and we use liters which we use the letter capital l for so these are the base units that we have in the metric system that we're going to use okay in our science classes now everything else is simply a power of 10 so if we go from like here to here, it's a power of 10. Now, power of 10 is really nice because it's a decimal point shift, okay? So when we do these types of conversions, it's really just counting like how many steps do, is, do we move from one to the next and say, oh, it's to the right. So it's one, two steps to the right. That means I would have to move my decimal point one, two steps to the right. So that's the beauty of powers of 10, okay, in the metric system. And it could be the other way too. We could go, we could go from like here. That's also to the right, um, but we could go to the left too. So we, let me shift our decimal point to the left. Okay. 
So it's really for anything between kilo and milli um, lives in there. Now, what does this dash represent? Um, this would be like decimeters. This would be centimeters. This would be milliliters. Or it would be decigrams. It'd be centigrams. It'd be milligrams. Right? So that's the idea. All we have to do is add the, the base units unit to where these dashes are. And that's what we get. Okay? So we have some other ways that we can convert. So, you know, that's great when we're between kilo and milli, which is all like within a power of a thousand on the base unit, right? A, kilo, a kilogram is a thousand times bigger than a gram. A milligram is a thousand times smaller. And this chart should look familiar. Um, at least it used to because this is what they use in chemistry. And we talked about, hey, how many units, um, powers of 10. Um, it could be written in exponential form. But we have a lot of different prefixes. We could also go through and we could look at it like this. So some of you, if, especially if you're involved with like computers, you might recognize the, the prefix of giga, tera, mega, kilo because we use that to measure in computers bytes, right? So we might have a kilobyte, we might have a megabyte, we might have a gigabyte, or we might have a terabyte, okay? So these things can be used in other things besides just measurements of like length and mass and volume. Um, and we can kind of go through, you might have recognized that. So now once we get beyond these, if we just, so what was on the previous like steps are those six units with our base unit being stuck in the middle. Once we get beyond kilo, bigger than kilo, or smaller than milli, they don't go by powers of 10. We kind of, they still are, but we go in like thousand, um, times a thousand increments. So what's a thousand times smaller than a millimeter? It's a micrometer. What's a thousand times smaller than that? A nanometer. What's smaller than that? A thousand times smaller? A picometer. Okay, so then we get into like powers of 10 because right, that times 10 to the minus third minus six, that's a power of 10. So we could use this to kind of go through and we could kind of help convert between this. So like I said, it's similar to what we did in chemistry, um, but we could use it a little bit different way. But like I said, what this is really focusing on is living kind of between the kilo and the milli prefixes. Okay, so if our base unit is meters, which is represented by an M. If we start with 2.5 meters, we want to figure out well, how many centimeters. Uh, this is something that we've talked about throughout the years, Mr. Foster and I, about how can we kind of do this? Because this is something we want you to very quickly be able to get between centimeters and meters and meters and centimeters. So if we kind of draw the analogy of dollars and cents, it you guys can do these no problems. So for example, it's, it's the same conversion factor, right? So it's cents... It's centimeters, and sometimes I get kind of cheesy and I say centimeters, right? Because we to try to draw you to that analogy. But the idea is, if I had zero point two five dollars, you could all say, "Well, that's twenty five cents." If I were to say you had five dollars, you would all very quickly be able to say, "Well, that's five hundred cents." If I were to say you had three dollars and twenty-five, uh, three dollars, three point two five dollars, you would say, well, that's three hundred and twenty-five cents. And it's the same idea. We're starting here in our base unit of meters, right? Meters, meters. That's our base unit. And then we can say, well, how many steps is it? Well, it's one, two steps to the right for centimeters. So we need to move our decimal point one two steps to the right. So if you had 2.5, this would be 250. Then I always kind of go through and double check and say, well, the decimal point was here, one, two. Yep, that was two steps. We have 0 0.54 meters, one, two. So it's gonna be, the decimal point was here, one, two. It's gonna be 54 centimeters. Now it's the opposite. If we're starting in centimeters, we're going to our base unit. Now it's two steps to the left. So my decimal point was here. I got to go two steps 
to the left. So in this case, it's 0 0.00025 because my decimal point was here and it's one, two steps to the left, to the left. It was here, one, two. So we're going to move that decimal point over. It's going to be 0 0.0234 meters. Just like with our dollar and cents analogy, if it was 36 cents, well, we'd say that's 0 0.36 dollars. If it's 125 cents, it's $1 and $1.25 dollars, right? It's the same steps. It's two steps from cents to dollars, just like cents, centimeters to meters, centimeters, right? Dollars and cents, right? It's the same. It's the same exact conversion. Okay. So then what if we went meters to kilometers? Now we're starting here in meters and now we're simply going one, two, three steps to the left. So my decimal point is implied to be right there, and we go one, two, three, so it's 2.456 kilometers, uh, and I always like to go one, two, three. Just to double check, three steps to the left, one, two, three, to the left. Okay, if you had 2.34 meters, again, three steps to the left, so in this case, you'd be 0 0.00 two, three, four, because it was here as one, two, three to the left. Base unit to kilometers. Now we're going the opposite way. We're going one, two, three to the right. So if we had, we go one, two, three, we'd go 3,200 because it's one, two, three, or if it was here, it's one, two, three. So in this case, it'd be 456 meters. Okay, we're just simply moving it. The last thing I want to show you is the units that we have when we use mass, grams to kilograms. Now, the only difference here is our base unit is now grams instead of meters. But we're going from grams to kilograms so it's one, two, three to the right. Okay, so now, well, you hit pause. You try this one. What do you get for an answer? Unpause it when you're done. That's what you should have gotten, 0 0.0102, because it, the decimal point was right here, and it's one, two, three to the left. How about the next one? Pause, try it on your own. So you should have gotten 0 0.000456 because the decimal point was here and it's one, two, three decimal points to the left. Switch that. Now we're going from grams to kilograms. We're now going from kilograms to grams. Okay, so now we're going from here, one, two, three to the right. So one, two, three, now we're talking 430 grams. Try the next one on your own. Hit pause. Unpause it when you're done. You should have gotten 10,200 because the decimal point was here, and then we have to go one, two, three. So these are really just unit conversions between kilo and milli. Um, we could do any ones in between. These, The ones that we're focusing on, or the ones that I did, are really the ones we're going to be dealing with a lot in class. The next time we look at unit conversions, we're going to get outside that. We're going to give some like different ones, like what if it was milliliters to kilometers or some other things. And we're also going to get something that we refer to as multi-units. But for now, this is really where we're, we're living. So there is a homework assignment that is attached to this that is really just kind of going through and doing some of these conversions. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. Um, I apologize for not getting this out a little sooner to you guys, um, but this, the assignment shouldn't take you too long. Have a great weekend, everyone.